Um, it is day four of the 67th London Film Festival in partnership with American Express. My name is Christy Matheson. I have the great privilege of being the festival director and to be with you all here tonight for um, this incredible headline gala. My sincere thanks to Apple Films. We saw this, um, this film some months ago in Cannes and um, it was a real dream for us to have it. So very, very pleased that we can all be here tonight in Royal Festival Hall to see Killers of the Flower Moon. When it comes to cinema, the word epic is really bandied around quite a bit. But I think the greatest epics really understand that scale is nothing without intimacy. And tonight's film is cinema writ large. It's, it's unfolding on a very vast canvas, but it very much probes deeply and very intimately the psychology and the environments of its characters. There is really always a sense of anticipation every time Martin Scorsese makes a new film, but I think with this one, um, it's incredibly special. At its heart, it's a compassionate tale of a proud nation who become the target of greed. We have two incredible guests with us here this evening, so without further delay, would you please join me in giving an incredibly warm welcome to Chief Standing Bear of the Osage Nation and co-writer and director Martin Scorsese. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Will you be sit here? Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> the full house in here tonight. So I thought we might just um, speak very briefly about the book, um, David Grant's uh, novel. Uh, is like your film, very epic in scale, but it takes quite a different structure to the film. In, in this film, you really centre the Osage nation and the people who mean to do them harm. So I'm wondering if you could tell us a little about how you and Eric Roth decided to approach the story structure of the film. Well, a lot of it has to do with, of course, um, uh, David Grant's book is a uh, non-fiction non and it has, uh, uh, it has the uh, point of view of uh, the Bureau of Investigation at that time, it be later became the FBI, uh, coming in to solve these crimes, so to speak. <clears throat> but as Eric and I were working on the script, um, I had difficulty in uh, a number of things. Uh, one, which uh, the shadow of the American Western, uh, which for me ended with uh, Peckinpah's uh, Wild Bunch, and then has become something else. Um, but primarily, um, uh, I found that um, I was more interested, ultimately, in what was happening on the ground. In other words, in the nonfiction book, which is quite extraordinary, it's coming from the outside in. And Leo was to, Leo DiCaprio was to play Tom White, and we were trying to find ways to make that very interesting because Tom White was a very straight-laced, very powerful, just as you see him here, portrayed by Jesse Plemons. And uh, ultimately, uh, spending time with the Osage uh, in uh, Pawhuska and in Grey, in Grey Horse, we learned that uh, certain characters in the film, the characters played by Leo and, and uh, Lily, Ernest and Molly, were very, very much in love. And ultimately, it was Leo DiCaprio who said, uh, where's the heart of the film? And I said, the heart of the film is really Molly and uh, Ernest. And he looked at me and said, what if I change parts? And I said, okay, that just means we have to open everything up from the inside out, and instead of coming from the outside in, we're in them with already. It's almost like soldiers only knowing in a battle what's ahead of you from one foot to, to forward and one foot left, from one foot right. You don't see anything else. You're there on the ground. Um, and so I felt that that was the way to go. And Chief Standing Bear, for people that are unaware of this, the shocking history that we see in, portrayed in tonight's film, What's, what does it mean for the Osage Nation to see this story on screen and to know that this is becoming uh, something that is seen globally? Yes, I can tell you that the overwhelming uh, sentiment is um, all, all of our fears that once again uh, we were going to be stereotyped as Native Americans while others tell our story. Uh, those fears were misplaced once we... Uh, began to know that Marty Scorsese was going to pick up where David Grant left and get, show the respect and care uh, that's needed to tell this delicate story, which is uh, still alive and well amongst my people. 
And when Marty walks in to the first meeting and says, we're going to film here, that started it off, and building that trust like David had done. And it's not just one meeting, one dinner. It, there were several over a period of years. And uh, they were all so careful, and we were too, to build on a relationship and work together. And the, the movie exceeded uh, our expectations. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And with, with David Grant, he spent a lot of time with you as well when he was writing the book, so it, it, there was an extension of, of that care. Absolutely. David um, uh, showed that this is a true story and documented it. And if you haven't read the book, uh, w one person told me today they're companion pieces. The, the book um, has a, a different approach to the story than the movie, and the movie talks about the people involved. Uh, David's book is uh, the birth of the FBI and the Osage Reign of Terror, and he stays uh, with that theme throughout the book. But his research skills uh, are remarkable, and it's, it's, it can be said that this is a true story. Uh, and unfortunately, um, the powers that make these things happen still exist, and this should never happen to anyone else. Um. In terms of your cast, you have an incredible cast in this film. Um, can you tell us a little about how you came to work with Lily Gladstone, you, you know, and, and just how that working relationship was against two actors who, who you've worked well, with? Well, it, it, I mean, Lily Gladstone was pr presented to me through um, my casting person who I've worked with for, since Goodfellas, and that's um, Ellen Lewis. And she pointed out right before the pandemic hit, uh, we were very concerned as to who could play Lily because, uh, I mean, who could play Molly. Uh, we were concerned because as we had to create a lot of the dialogue for them, as opposed to other characters in the picture, some of the dialogue is already existing in the transcripts of their trials and in interviews by the FBI or Bureau of Investigation. So we were very concerned about that. But we said we need somebody who really could play this, who really could understand the very nature of, um, of this world and that love and that trust and that betrayal. And, and, and Ellen uh, told me, I think we're gonna be all right, which is code for, I think we got the person. And before, we, before the, the pandemic hit, she showed me um, uh, certain women, Kelly Reichardt's film, and this whole sequence that she plays, Lily. And I said, you're right, she's amazing. I said, she's really something, she has a face. I said, this is perfect cinema face. You know, it's up there and you could read anything into it. And at the same time, you see the intelligence and the emotion and the psychology all going on behind her eyes or through her eyes. Um, and so she had that uh, grounding um, that myself and uh, Leo ultimately needed. And eventually, after the pandemic, I was able to meet her on Zoom because we still couldn't meet. And I was convinced and Leo and, and our producers were all concerned and eventually we had Leo and Lily and myself and Ellen on another Zoom. And after an hour of talking, he, you know, she hung up and Leo called me up and said, she's great. <laughs> it's exactly what we need. I, said, I know, I know. I told you. I said, ah, okay. <laughs> no, no, she really is good. I said, I know. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to do this. So, <laughs> But um, uh, I think she's, um, yeah, when he said, where's the, where's the heart of the movie? The heart of the movie is that's love story between them and the, and the, um, the soul of the movie is her. It really is. It's an incredible performance. It's an incredible film, and it tells an, a very, very important story, which may have happened some time ago, but really still resonates today. Um, I think you're in for such an extraordinary ride over the next few hours. Would you please join me in thanking Chief Standing Bear and Martin Scorsese? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.